Hey guys, Pete here from Top Deck Cards and Games, and today we're going to be going over Deck Profile. Today's deck is the ever-elusive Yevitsol Garbador. Now, we have Nationals coming up here really soon, July 4th weekend, and figured it'd be a good idea to cover some of the main threats that you may see at that tournament. So, with this setup, I currently have built with nine Pokemon line, a 12 energy count. Um, we're going to be running three Yevitals, one one off of Dark Rye EX. Um, we're running a 2 2 line of Garbodor and a one off of Sableye. The Dark Rye and Sableye, as pretty much for the past two years, have been very staple Pokemon in any kind of Dark build. Just for the wonderful ability of Dark Cloak for, for your treating, as long as there's Dark Energy and Sableye for getting your item cards back. Definitely a good way to start the game with, and also mid-game to get some key things back. Now, this deck is more simplistic than usual. Um, this deck has two purposes. It is to make sure your opponent can't do what their deck is supposed to do while hitting them really hard pretty simple concepts. Um, I'm running an 8 count of Dark Energy and a 4 count of Double Colorless to help pump up Yevitol faster. Uh, Yevitol will be doing the Brunt of the Damage with Evil Ball, doing 20 damage plus 20 more for each energy on it and the defending Pokemon, so it ramps up pretty quickly. Dark Rack can be used as an alternate attacker in case you need to do that additional spread or you're just going up against a deck that's not very energy heavy. So it's a good way to guarantee at least a lot of damage going out, spread a little bit, all that fun stuff. So, let's pop into the trainer line real quick. Now, as usual with dark decks, the trainer line is especially heavy. Because we have Sableye, there's a lot of this stuff that we can get back, so it lets us get away with running more one-offs of things. At least feel safer running one-offs of things. So, in this particular build, you may see that I'm running a little low on supporters as far as the standard 12. And the reason for this is because of Palpat, which I'll be showing here in a moment. So, my personal line here, I'm running a computer search. You can easily exchange this out for a dowsing machine. Depends on your preferences. I think computer search is better early game because it'll guarantee exactly what you want in the beginning game, whereas dowsing machine has more benefit mid to late game, getting back something crucial that you already used. Um, running a four count of Juniper, three ends for card refresh and disruption late game, two Skylas, one Lysander for catcher ability, one Colress, because chances are you may not necessarily have your bench filled, but your opponent most likely will. So it's a decent hand draw mid to late game. We are running two Verbank Cities for Stadium Wars, and we do have some Hypnotoxics in here to benefit from that. Um, we will be running two Muscle Bands to help. Uh, Dark Rye and Yevitol pump out some extra damage and some float stones so that we can make sure Garbodor is active. As a disclaimer, do note that these deck lists are not concrete set in stone. You can literally just change whatever you want, however you want. And I highly, highly recommend that you do so based on the current metagame you're going up against. If you play locals, you want to adjust your deck to do better against locals. As far as national goes, there's not a purely defined metagame just yet, as is typical every year. So, you can't consistently build something that's just going to guarantee you top percentage of wins, because you just don't know exactly what you're going to expect. And there's nothing personally wrong with that. So here we are into the item line. You'll notice there's just a whole lot of one-offs of things. Get him in there. I am running four hypnotoxic lasers for dark patches. Dark patches for obvious energy acceleration. Lasers for the additional damage and possible turn disruption. 
Uh, we are running three ultra balls for searching. Um, this, ter this specific build, I am running some Pokemon catchers in, just for the fact that they're still a useful card. Yes, they do have a coin flip associated to them now. So, you know, you still have that 50% chance of it working, but at the same time, that can still provide a very crucial game-winning knockout. And I do believe that they're still justifiable. Um, we are running one ofs of Bicycle, Random Receiver, Startling Megaphone, Tool Scrapper, Sacred Ash, Pal Pad, and Professor's Letter. Uh, bicycle for that quick, just hand refresh if we just dumped our old hand and we don't want to go into top deck mode just yet. Random Receiver will help justify the lower supporter count. Same with Pal Pad. Being able to get two supporters back into your deck is a handy device, especially when you can get that Pal Pad back. Uh, Startling Megaphone Tool Scrapper. I decided to run one of each instead of two or one or two of the other, mostly because having a Tool Scrapper is nice in this deck in case you need to shut off Garbotoxin in order to use uh, Dark Eyes uh, ability for free retreating if you need to do that. It's good to have that option. Otherwise, you can still use it on your opponent. Megaphone will wipe your opponent's tools off the board. Sacred Ash for uh, getting back key Pokemon. If your Sableye gets knocked out or your Darkrai gets knocked out or is in the discard for whatever reason, you can use that and get them back in the deck. So you're not completely out of options. And Professor's Letter when you need to get energy in your hand in a pinch, when you're about to Juniper to throw it away, and Dark Patch it all on somewhere. So that's pretty much the idea with the deck. And I do expect it to do a lot of good in the up and coming national championships. It's a very simplistic, very solid deck. Um, and for the most part, fairly cheap too if you go the non bling routes. You have a tallest you can pick up for about $7 a piece. Dark Rise you can also get for about $7 or $8 a piece with the. Um, with the Legendary Treasures versions. Garbodors, also in Legendary Treasures for like a dollar a piece. Sableye is probably, could potentially be one of the more expensive Pokemon in this deck. They run for about four to five a piece, depending what you where you go and get them. So if you don't already have them, it might be a pain, but you only need one. So make them trades. But that is the Yevatel Garbodor deck and if you have any questions or if you like what you see, you know, please leave a comment. Uh, please subscribe to us on YouTube and look out for our Facebook page and our Twitter page for any upcoming announcements, events, anything of that sort. So until next time, I'll see you later.